I get interviewed a lot. Here's one with Bob Powell of TheStreet.com. Be sure to keep watching because I have additional comments which apply not only to people on Medicare, but also prior to Medicare for all age divisions. The thing about YouTube, which is trying to put you into silos, the problem with that is that topics that are sitting here on Maximize Your Medicare and on Jay's Corner apply to multiple age divisions. I wish I had a quick fix. I don't. I'm just playing by him. Let's go to the interview. Are you working past the age of 65 at a large employer and still have the opportunity to contribute to an HSA? What should you do? Well, here to talk with me about this is Jay O, author of Maximize Your Medicare. Jay, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bob. So many folks who are age 65 working at a large employer may have the opportunity to contribute to an HSA, but should they? It's a complicated question, Bob. And basically what has occurred is that the trend of working towards 65 is probably not going to stop. And especially many people want to continue to work beyond 65 as full retirement age under Social Security is no longer 65, but will ultimately be 67. If you work at a large employer, you do have the right to delay Part A and Part B. Frequently, people suggest to enroll in Part A. That is possible because there is no premium and your Part A benefits can contribute or basically coordinate with your health insurance as provided by your large employer. That said, there is a special exception sometimes not well known, which is that you cannot have and contribute. You cannot contribute to an HSA and also be simultaneously enrolled in Part A. And this is an important and a subtle fact because many times HR departments are not fully up to speed. They've not yet fully adopted to this idea that persons are going to be working beyond 65. They've got a lot of responsibility, different responsibilities there. The issue is that if you contribute and exceed, if you contribute to an HSA and you are simultaneously enrolled in Part A, you are creating a tax violation and then you could be penalized for that excess deposit into an HSA. Hmm. So I know there's all sorts of rules about when you have to stop contributing to an HSA when you enroll in Part A. You can enroll in Part A up to three months prior to turning 65, can you still contribute uh, at that point to your HSA and then terminate once you turn 65 or how does that work? Yes, yeah, so the HSA contribution limits are actually on a month by month basis. So while, so for example, if you, part A was July 1st, then you're not on Medicare for the first six months, you can contribute into the HSA of half of the annual contribution limit. That said, it's not based on the timing, but rather on the year's contribution limit and how many months you are not on Part A. Hmm. So you mentioned earlier too, Jay, that uh, you don't necessarily have to sign up for Part A if you have an employer-provided health insurance, in which case you'd still be able to contribute to your HSA even if you were older than 65. It is true, Bob, and some persons want to take advantage of the tax efficiency of an HSA, meaning that those are pre-tax dollars, you get to take a deduction, your employer may be contributing into the HSA. So there can be situations where you actually do not enroll in Part A, but simply keep your large employment employer provided health insurance and continue on contributing into your HSA. An HSA is a separately owned bank account. You need to have a high deductible health insurance plan. It is yours and yours forever. When you make a deposit into an HSA, you can reduce your taxable income in the year that you deposit it. You can use the funds from an HSA for a qualified medical expense. It's a term defined by the IRS. In addition to that, you'll be able to also use the funds and possibly even invest on a tax-free basis. Many HSA banks, they allow access into mutual funds or other securities. There's an annual limit as well as a household limit 
that you can deposit into an HSA account every year. A range of uses for an HSA, and it doesn't really matter what your age division is. In fact, I have an HSA account myself. One challenge with an HSA is if you are also enrolled in Medicare, that you cannot have Medicare Part A and deposit into an HSA. You can't deposit into it. Your employer cannot deposit on your behalf. I, the reason I have to keep addressing the point is because of the fact that people are working beyond 65, a trend that will very likely to continue over time. There exists a proposal, a bipartisan bill, where you can continue to contribute into your HSA while still being enrolled in Medicare. We don't know how it's going to turn out yet, but it's important to stay up to date on these issues. For persons with young families, for example, you can deposit into the HSA and keep depositing into the HSA. And for example, you you have a child, they need braces, qualified medical expense. Now you can pay with pre-tax dollars. In other words, qualified medical expense means more than just what is covered by your health insurance. Of course, you can use your pre-tax dollar funds in the HSA account to pay for co-pays, deductibles, and out-of-pocket expenses as defined by the IRS. I don't believe in being insurance poor. Absolutely not. People have other priorities. People have to eat. So when there are tax advantage situations, when there's uses of money where the benefits per amount that you pay is very favorable or very likely in your instance, the way on how you can get the most. Like today's video, if you have, please be sure to like and subscribe. It helps other people discover Jay's Corner. Thanks.